Hello, everybody, and welcome to Walking Between Shadows. I'm Taryn Elliott, and along with me is my amazing husband. I'm Ben Elliott. And we're here to talk about true crime all the time. Hey, Ben. Hey, Taryn. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Right on. You ready to talk about this case? I'm here with you, so I'm ready for whatever you got. All right. We're going back to April of 1997 and to a group of kids in Pikesville, Kentucky. And they called them the Satanic Six. Do you, yeah, do sounds you, like fun. Yeah, do you remember the 90s, like the, the church burnings and the, uh, the kids that went around dressed like trench coat mafia and yeah, but see, the 90s was such a drastically different decade because the church burnings happened in 93. And early 90s was coming off the 80s. And then you get to the late 90s and grunge had started and gotten really big. So you had all this trench coat mafia stuff, these goth dressing people that... What did they listen to? Do you remember? I was not a member of the trench coat mafia, not the Trenton trench coat mafia. Yeah, I mean... It's as much as I hate to admit it, and I love Nine Inch Nails, but there was a lot of Nine Inch Nails played in the late night. Did they listen to Pearl Jam? Uh, probably a lot of Pearl Jam, too. Nirvana, maybe? Yeah. Well, yeah. I listened to that. Yeah. Uh, it's good music. Yeah. Right. It's good music, but they just, it was overkill. I mean, it was constant. Yeah, it was a lot of depression and goth and just people thinking it was cool to commit suicide, things like that. And talk about death and dismemberment and nasty shit. Right. Yeah, satanic worship. And, and, and there was a lot of little groups of people that were wannabe satanic people. Yeah, and, and I remember a dude that was a year older than me, and rest his soul, he's no longer with us, but he used to dabble in both sides of that. He Every once in a while, he'd want to get together and have a seance. You know, yeah. It was yeah. Justin. Oh, okay. I know so, who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, every once in a while, he, he it would be, all right, let's listen to some hip-hop and, and be urban cool. Right, and then so the that next was... day, it was like, let's go have a seance and listen to records backwards and shit like that. <laughs> what records were there that you could listen to backwards? Do you remember? I don't remember. I mean, he had them all. I mean, he yeah. was real into that shit, but <laughs> I, I don't remember. And I'm sure somebody hears this, they're going to know, like, name them off. <laughs> Especially if they're in our age group. Right. So that that year, I was, well, I had two children already. Yeah. But, yeah, I remember those times. Yep. Because I was still very young. Yeah. And this was early 97, right? April of 1997, there was a group of kids hanging out in Pikesville, Kentucky. And they were a group of, I don't want to call them losers, but I'm going to call them losers. They so, sure turned out that way. Exactly. They, uh, they, were, they were self-proclaimed satanic worshipers and occultists. And so it was these six kids, and the main ringleader would have been Natasha Cornett. And she liked to spell her name backwards. So you can go through some places in Pikesville, Kentucky, and some bridges that she painted, uh -huh. or used to. Now, this was years ago. They've probably been painted over by now, where she would spray paint her name, A. Satan. That means that she belonged to him. Oh, really? So, so cool. Really? It's kind of like Nevaeh. Yeah. What's that? Heaven. Oh. Sorry. You mean people have named kids Nevaeh? There's lots of kids named Nevaeh. Because it's heaven spelled backwards. Right. But Natasha is a Satan. But anyway, so this crazy bitch, she was into the occult and spelled right. her name backwards. Right. And she was also kind of a little runaround. So in this group, there was, an there was another girl by the name of Karen Howe. And she was 17 years old. Natasha was 18. Jason Bryant who was 14, Joseph Reisner, who was 20, Crystal Sturgill, who was 18, and Dean Mullins, who was 19. And 
she ran through every one of those, I believe, except for Crystal Sturgill. I mean, every one of them. So, so she was of the Libesian persuasion she, for a while, too? <laughs> she, she was of that. Wow. And so, you know, we talked about Crystal Pike last week. Mm-hmm. She's a big buddy of Crystal Pike now. Up at Tennessee Department of Corrections. Oh, yeah. Tennessee's Isn't death he? row woman. Right. Yeah, we did that two weeks ago. hmm Wow. So, look at it. Right, that. right. So, what was it about her and Krista Pike that happened? Well, there was like a, a fire or something that broke out, and it got all the inmates, or three of them I know of, together. And that would have been Crystal Pike, Natasha Cornett, and another inmate. And I don't know what her name was. Do you? I don't know. I can't remember either. Anyway, they they kind of attacked this one. Mm-hmm. And I believe Crystal Pike stated she was taken up for her friend. Yeah. Which and would she, have been Natasha. Which would have been Natasha. Okay. And she almost killed this lady. Oh, yeah. She choked the shit out of her, didn't she? She sure did with her shoelace. Mm. Quick on the draw. Mm-hmm. So, Natasha was pretty much the ringleader of these, of these people. And she would, they would get together and have seances and, and uh, drink each other's blood, which is really cool, right? What? Well, that's what I, that's what, that's what they say. That's oh, what that they makes did. Me want to throw up. Kind of nasty. So they go on April the fourth. Mm-hmm. These six go to a motel called the Kali. I believe it's called the Kali Motel yeah. in Pikesville. And they're they're doing their seances and they're burning six 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 in the carpet. I don't, I don't know how they did that. If they had a six 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 brander, or maybe if they did it with like cigarettes. Yeah, or lighter fluid. Neat. Mm-hmm. So they did that, and then they cut each other and drank each other's blood, and they watched Natural Born Killers and decided they wanted to go on a road trip. Mm-hmm. They were sick of this little town, nothing to offer. They were going to Louisiana. So, yeah, thinking about the occult and the dark arts and the black magic, we're better to go than Voodoo Haven. Right. Hmm. So They didn't stay very long, though, did they? Well, no, they did not. They had a little, little issue, a big issue that they created. Yeah. On So they, they spend the night there on the 4th. On the 5th, they go back to Natasha's. Natasha's mother, whose name is Madonna. Of the rocks? Not not the Madonna that, like a virgin Madonna, but this is a different Madonna. Uh-huh. This would be Natasha's mom, Madonna. So she she stated that the, that the kids came over and were zombie-like. Yeah. Walking into the house, getting things for their trip. And actually, Karen Hal told Madonna, that the end was coming. Hmm. I don't know if she... Like the end of days for everybody, or... Don't know. That I don't know. Oh. I didn't attend that meeting the night before. Oh, it'll so. be a fly on the wall. Right. So, they they leave. And I'm sure Mama Madonna was feeling like, what the hell? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, almost like she was watching a video of, like, what the hell is going on here? So embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like being in a fishbowl. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, you, you, you just watch everybody go by. Yeah. So, so Mama Madonna watches them all leave in this little car that probably couldn't, shouldn't have fit more than four. Right. But there's six piled in there. Yeah. And... Joseph, or Joe, what they call Joe, um, he had stolen his father's vehicle. It didn't run very good anyway. He sounds like a winner, 20 years old, stealing his dad's vehicle and uh, stealing money. And they start their road trip down in this little car that did not run good, was tiny, mm-hmm. and they head towards Tennessee. Now, this is when they're on their way to Louisiana, right? They're headed to Louisiana, but they knew they were going to have to stop. Yeah. And get a vehicle, Mm -hmm. you know, 
they're going to carjack somebody or. Yeah, daddy's beater wasn't going to get them far. Right. And, and some people say that they claim they were going to kill somebody. Right. Or Natasha said that. We don't know. Uh-huh. So they head down the interstate and they get off on a rest stop somewhere off of Interstate 81. Uh-huh. And it's in Balington or close to Balington, Tennessee. And at the same time, there's a family. That's headed from Johnson City. It's a Jehovah's Witness family. Mm-hmm. And they came, they're coming from a conference from Freedom Hall. Mm-hmm. And they were going to stop at this rest stop, too. Where was Freedom Hall? Freedom Hall was a, a, a center like that had these conventions and conferences for religious or I'm not sure if maybe it's. For anybody that wants to come rent out that space, I'm not sure. But it was in Johnson City, Tennessee. Oh, okay. Or they both were headed back towards Knoxville. In that vehicle, or in that van, was Bedar Lilliad and his wife, Delphina, their six-year-old daughter, Tabitha, and their two-year-old son, Peter. hmm They also stopped at the same rest stop that the Satanic Six stopped at. hmm They were going to get out and let the babies get some fresh air and have a picnic and enjoy some time there together before they went back to their home in Knoxville. Yeah. Uh, Badar was a bellman and for the holiday in there in Knoxville and Delphina stayed home with the children. So they, they didn't have much. So yeah, so he had worked there and when they, before they had left the conference, another Another couple had asked him to go to dinner, the family mm-hmm. to go to dinner with him. They didn't have much money. You know, like I said, he was a bellman. The Phoenix stayed home. So mm-hmm. they just decided to stop at this rest stop and feed the kids and give them some fresh air. And they they come across Natasha and Karen. Mm-hmm. Gothic, you know, very gothic dressed. And these were very religious people. And they decided to approach the six and ask them to, uh, and, and Badar asked them if they knew who God was. Yeah, he probably saw their appearance and persona, how they were acting, and decided it was a chance to witness to somebody that might be a tough sell. Right. Yeah. So, Jason, the 14-year-old, pulls a gun on Badar. And orders him to the van. Uh huh. Jason, Natasha, Karen, and Joe get in the vehicle with Delphina, Vidar, and the two children. Crystal and Dean stay behind them in the car that they had stolen from Joe's father. Mm-hmm. So. Joe's in the front seat with the gun held to Vidar, ordering him to drive. They get back onto the interstate and go about three miles. During this time, Tabitha scared the baby's crying. Delphina tries to sing to the children and comfort them. Jason tells her to shut up. She was not allowed to do that. Natasha claims that she turned to Tabitha, the the six-year-old, and and told her that it was going to be okay. And kind of smiled at her. And at that time, Tabitha offered her and Karen a Hershey kiss. Uh Uh-huh. Kind of a peace offering. Trying to humanize the situation, I believe. Yeah. But that's a lot for a little six-year-old girl. I'm sure she was terrified. Yeah. Along with her mom and dad and the baby. Yeah, just the Yeah, just the appearance of these people terrified those kids, at least. Right. So they go about three miles down the road to to an exit, and they're ordered off the exit to a a road. It's a gravel road. Looks like there's not much going on there, so they're ordered to pull off to the side of the road and out of the vehicle. Badar begins to beg and bargain. Please don't hurt us. Yeah. I will give you, you know, the van, 
I will not call the police. You can have my money. Please just don't hurt us. Jason had the gun pulled on them at that time. And. Now, Jason was the youngest of the whole bunch. Right. right? And they had stolen two two guns from Joe's father. Yeah, yeah. And one maybe from Dean's father. I'm not sure which one. Sure. But there was two guns. So there was a nine millimeter and there was a 25 caliber. And I believe Jason had the nine. And I don't know who, and it's never been stated exactly who had the 25 caliber yeah. weapon. Yeah. But at that time, Natasha jumps in between and says, Do not hurt the babies. You know, if, if somebody's got to die, it's not going to be the kids. You can shoot me. This is what she claims. Yeah. And in, in her testimony, she was very shaken up. I mean, she was upset. Yeah. But. Well, that, she didn't look at sitting there, though. No, she did not. No. That, I'm not sure about. Because as soon as she stepped away, Madar was shot. And I believe he was shot four times in the chest in a triangular shape. Mm-hmm. And. Tabitha was in front of him. Mm-hmm. Delfina was holding the baby. And she was then shot. I believe she was shot in the abdomen and possibly in the leg. Mm-hmm. I believe she was shot four times as well. Adar was shot again in the head. They shot through the children, basically, the baby. Mm-hmm. But as they were leaving and getting in the van, Natasha says that the, the little girl was standing over her mother. And, and in, I'm sure, shock, the baby was on top of the mother, Delphina. Uh-huh. And Jason, supposedly Jason, turned around and shot the little girl. The six got into the van, Vidar's van, and they headed out. But before they turned around, as they were backing up, they ran over the bodies. And Jason began laughing and saying, look at the little girl. She looks like she just got fucked laying there all sprawled out. Evil. Just mm-hmm. evil. Mm-hmm. So they leave and they head towards Mexico. They get to the border. And you know when you get to the border, you have about six miles in there before you get to a checkpoint where you have to provide your passport or your papers any identification they had none of these things and security led them back to the first checkpoint there the officer there said the computers hadn't worked all day long until the that van pulled up Mm -hmm. when they ran that it went straight to the elite family Mm -hmm. and when searching the vehicle they They found things that belonged to the children and the family, house keys and toys and pictures and things like that, and were able to trace it back to the people they found on the side of the road because while they were on their trip to Mexico fleeing, someone heard gunshots, and what they said to sound like children playing on a playground and the police were called soon after. This was during the commission of the crime, almost. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was two days after the murders that they were all apprehended and, and taken into custody. Mm-hmm. So um, a year later, they went to trial, and they were all trying to point fingers at Jason because he was the youngest. And, of course, they thought he was going to get the least amount of time. Yeah. But that didn't work. They all had to to be on trial together. Yeah. And they all pled guilty to avoid the death penalty. Yeah. And received, I believe it was three consecutive life sentences, each of them. hmm The baby, the two-year-old, survived. And was adopted out by a 
family member in Norway, I believe. So he's still around, and I believe he's doing okay. Maybe he still has some handicaps from mm -hmm. the incident. Yeah. So that's that's the story of the Satanic Six. Yeah, in northeast Tennessee. Right. And uh, Natasha is serving time at the Women's Correctional Facility in Nashville, which yes. is also where Krista Pike is. That's right. Do we know where the rest of them are? They're all in Tennessee. But we don't know what facility they're in. We do at. not know what facility they're in. But they're yeah. all in Tennessee. And I've seen yeah, lots of appeals and yeah. Facebook page uh, pages for for Natasha and and Karen. I have seen those two free free those girls. But they did what they did. Yeah. And I think they need to be exactly where they're at. Yeah. Yeah, it's likely that the guys got split up and some are maybe at River Bend in Nashville and some maybe down here in Tiptonville in West Tennessee. Right. It's definitely a sick case of even sicker people. I appreciate your coverage and, and the story. Do you want to say a little bit about what we're doing next week? Next week we will be focusing on Debbie and Ambria and updating. There will be a lot of updates. Yeah. And I think we're going to bring in the family too and Debbie's best friend, Christy, and I'm excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. I am too. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, me too. Thanks, babe. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been Walking Between Shadows. Again, I'm your host, Ben Elliott, and my wife, Taryn Elliott. Look for our next episodes coming soon, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button.